It's another binomial theorem question. We are told the first four terms of this expansion here, 1 plus ax to the power of n, where a is just a number, in ascending power of x are as follows. Where a, n and k are constants and the modulus of ax is, is less than 1. Find a and find n. Okay, well, firstly, let's, um, let's write down what the binomial theorem is. It's 1 plus x to the power of n uh, up to let's say we're going up to x cubed, so that's 1 plus nx plus n n minus 1 over 2 times 1 x squared plus n n minus 1 n minus 2 over 3 times 2 times 1 x cubed. Okay, now in our case we're actually doing 1 plus ax, so what would 1 plus ax to the power of n, play, n be? It would be 1 plus n ax plus n, n minus 1, over 2, this would be, ax squared, so that would be a squared, x squared, plus n, n minus 1, n subtract 2, over 6, and it would be a cubed, x cubed. Okay, so all I've done there is replace x. All I've done is replace x here with ax, and I've, I've tidied things up. Now, we are actually told that this is equal to the following. We are told this is equal to 1 subtract 4x plus 24x squared. Should be a squared there, by the way. Plus kx cubed. So we can equate coefficients uh, of each of these to, to see what numbers uh, n and a must be. So... Let's have a go at doing that. Clearly from this, you can see okay, that Na must be equal to negative 4. You must be able to see that there, to have the same number of x's. So Na must be equal to negative 4. Okay, what else can we say? Well, we could say this here. N n minus 1 over 2 a squared must be equal to 24. So the next thing we could say is we could say n, n minus 1, a squared over 2 must be equal to 24. Okay, and we've got ourselves two um, equations with two unknowns and we could solve those. Now clearly we could also equate these, we could say that uh, must be equal to k, which we're going to do as well to find k later. But we won't do that just now, we'll do that in part b. So let's uh, say what we let's see what we can say from this. Here's equations one and two. Now, what we can do is we can tie. Uh, we can uh, maybe let's go for a substitution method here. Let's go for a substitution. So from this one, we can say that a is going to be negative four over n, and just tidying this one up, doubling both sides and expanding the brackets, we could say that n squared subtract n, just times that n in, a squared would be equal to 24 times 2, which is 48, just tidying those up. And I might call that 3 and 4. Now let's go for a substitution. Let's put 3 in 4. So 3 in 4, let's say sub 3 in 4. So we would get n squared subtract n, uh, and then we would get multiplied by uh, that squared, which would be 16 over n squared, is equal to 48. Okay, now we can multiply this out. This would be n squared multiplied by 16 over n squared, which is 16, and take away n multiplied by this, which would be actually 16 over n. That would be equal to 48. Timesing everything by n, 16n minus 16 would be 48n, Subtracting 16n off both sides, uh, we would get ourselves 32n here, and then dividing both sides by 32, n must be equal to negative a half. Now, if n is equal to negative a half, a is negative 4 divided by negative a half, which would be equal to 8. So we've got our answers here. Our answer is n is equal to negative a half and a is equal to 
8. Now lastly, we have to show k is negative 160. Well, the other equation we could have written, we could have written that n, n minus 1, n minus 2. So we could have written n, n minus 1, n minus 2 over 6 a cubed was going to be equal to k, comparing these two things here. Uh, comparing that with k. But now obviously we know our n and we know our a. So this is therefore telling us uh, that negative a half, negative 3 over 2, negative 5 over 2, over 6, multiplied by 8 cubed is going to be equal to k. And it's just a case of tapping that on the calculator. And it's telling us clearly then that k is indeed negative 160. So k is in fact negative 160 and we're done there.